This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everyone. Today I want to talk about the exciting topic of the inversion of the yield curve. But wait, don't run away yet. I promise to give you a very interesting value stock that's acting like a growth stock that pays an 80% dividend. Uh, so you want to be in, uh, in for that. Uh, I, if you can't stand the inversion talk, I understand. I, I have an aversion to inversion myself. Uh, but you might want to go about six minutes into this video where I talk about uh, my uh, value stock that I'm high on. On the internet and on YouTube, you can see all kinds of people fretting about the inverting of the yield curve. Uh, around the end of March. Now, it sounds like it's something to be concerned about, but the more you look into it, the less at least I'm concerned about it. Now, while if you go back to 1900, uh, there's been about 28 times that the yield curve has inverted. That's where the yield on the 10-year bond is less than the yield on the two-year bond. The reason that's of concern is usually on a longer 10-year bond, you expect the interest rate to be higher to get people to buy it. Uh, but when the, the yield on the two-year bond actually becomes higher, people are getting a higher interest rate for investing for two years and getting a lower rate for investing for 10 years. Uh, that's the inversion of the of the yield curve because that that should not happen. Uh, what that's usually signaling is that higher interest rates are going to come, which we surely know from the Federal Reserve's telling us that uh, Jerome Powell has guaranteed that's going to happen. So this is no surprise. Now, while it's so-called been successful, and I think counting those 22 of 28 times, uh, that's a little better than 75%, I think that's being extremely generous. You know, sometimes the recession hasn't occurred until four years later after the, the yield curve inverted like that. So that tends to be very unimpressive. In fact, uh, it can tell you that a recession is going to come or is likely to come, but it can't tell you when it's going to come. The average time that the recession starts from the beginning of the inversion of the yield curve to the recession actually starting is 22 months. That's almost two years after the yield curve inverts. And then, like I say, 25% of the time, it doesn't even happen. Uh, so it tends to be very imprecise. Uh, it can tell you that it's likely to come, that there's a three out of four chance that it's going to come, uh, but it can't tell you when, and there's likely to be a significant delay. And further, there's likely to be major uh, stock advances in the time between when it inverts and when the recession starts. Uh, between the time where it inverts and the recession starts, the average gain during that time has been 19%, okay? So you don't want to give up the ship or give up the ghost <laughs> because uh, the yield curve has inverted. What, bring, what it brings to mind for me is that the stock market is not the economy. Uh, they can move differently, uh, uh, such as when uh, recently, when we had the so-called uh, uh, crash of 2020, and then almost the immediate, you know, upscaling of the stock market where it went ballistic on price. Uh, the economy wasn't doing well, but because monetary policy was so loose and interest rates were nothing, uh, the stock market did well. Uh, so the stock market is affected deeply uh, by the Fed, uh, but this is also complicated by how well th the economy does. I think we have a situation where the economy can take 
uh, about a two point uh, up to a two point five percent interest rate, and uh, and uh, at least until two percent, and that is going to be for at least a, another year. They tell us, uh, and then uh, between two percent and two point five percent, that's a gray area. I think if we hit three percent, then I think yeah, a recession is going to follow. But I doubt that they're going to raise it that much. They might. Uh, once they hit three percent, I'm thinking that it's going to uh, uh, crash at some point, and I will be much more conservative in my investing. But for now, I think we've got a clear runway, especially with the recent action in the stock market, that it's going to take off. So those are my thoughts on the so-called uh, inverted. A yield curve. I don't think it's that much to worry about, at least for a year or so. So the outstanding uh, value stock that acts like a growth stock is Zim Integrated Shipping. It's an in Israeli international shipping uh, company, and they have a price to earnings ratio of about three, <laughs> and its its price is around seventy one dollars. And its true value is like a hundred dollars, so it's vastly undervalued. And they pay a wild dividend. Okay, now because I had the, the uh, stock in my possession sometime in March, on April fourth they're going to pay a seventeen dollar dividend. <laughs> you know, and this is on a seventy one dollar stock. Okay. And then I think in the future, they're planning to, to pay another high dividend. I've seen everything from their dividend being anything from 80% to 27%. So I'm a little confused. And the Israeli government keeps part of the dividend uh, just because you don't pay taxes in Israel. Uh, so they're going to keep part of it. Uh, uh, but I think that probably reduces your United States tax. I'm not sure of that. You'd have to talk to your tax advisor. But in any case, I'll update you on how this all pans out. I can hardly believe it. Uh, they have a very uh, good growth rate. They have an earnings growth rate of 45%. So this value stock uh, has an earnings, uh, an earnings growth rate that's like a major growth stock. I mean, that's getting pretty close to Tesla's, which is 52%. Uh, so I did want to mention this. I, I think it's an unusual stock. Uh, again, I'm waiting to see how this all pans out uh, between the high dividend. I think they make so much money, they can't think of anything to do with it other than pay a dividend uh, because I don't think they necessarily want to keep buying ships. I think they have like 120 ships, something in that, that area uh, that are international. It's international shipping around the world. So that's my hot tip for the day. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe so that you receive future videos and good luck in, in all your investing.